hiding out in my garage today because it's a windy day out and I apologize right up front. I'm sure there's going to be a bit of wind noise on this video, but I don't have a choice. Somebody is picking up the GX in about an hour and a half. So I wanted to make an exit video of it. I've owned it for uh, about two and a half years and it has been phenomenal. I just have too many vehicles and I just don't need it. And so unfortunately it's gotta go. It's been very reliable, although I do have a list of things I've done to it. And that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this video, what you might uh, want to expect if you own one of these, or at least what my experience has been, which has been pretty much what people tell you it's probably gonna be. So the good news is that I'm not leaving the Lexus family. I still have my LS, um, but obviously these are two completely different vehicles despite how many similarities there are. Um, so, you know, definitely definitely a different ballpark here, but uh, I'm gonna try and do a quick walk around. I, there again, you're gonna get a lot of wind noise. There's no two ways about it. But when I picked this one out, um, I, I looked at several and I got it before, uh, before the COVID pricing started to hit and the GXs already were possibly getting more expensive. And then, um, COVID hit and they really shot way up like a lot of things, but it seems like the GX is maybe more so than others. So, uh, but I was pretty picky. I looked at several and I like this one. It's not flawless. In fact, there's a crack and the front bumper cover and, and there's a few dings on the exterior and, and whatnot. But, uh, I, I had a pretty specific list. I wanted the, the tan leather interior. I wanted a non navigation unit. I wanted a newer one. This is an 08. Um, with the variable valve timing that made like the extra whatever 35 horsepower um, And so that's what I got and the thing that really sold me on this one was that the interior was really clean um, The other ones I looked at they, and they did have more miles this one right now has just shy of 178 But the other ones I looked at just had a bit more wear than this one and I really wanted to get one I'm not real hard on vehicles. And so if I buy one nice it stays nice. So without further ado, we're gonna do a quick walk around out in the wind. So uh, one of the big things on these, one of the huge things on these is the frame. And if you look close, you can see kind of the little dings along here. Um, some of the, you know, all in all, it's not a bad looking vehicle, but it does have some paint chips. You stick your head underneath here, and this has a good frame. There's a tiny bit of surface rust on the welds, but for the most part, you can see this is a really, really solid frame. That's number one of what you want to look for at these. Now, I'll kind of walk around here. And we'll open up a door here. So there's just a little bit of wear on the seat here, but that is the worst thing on this whole interior. It is a beautiful interior. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know if that's any better. Um, I've got WeatherTech mats in it. Uh, you got the adjustment right here. You've got on the dash, you've got these three little lights to tell you the height of the suspension and you can hit the arrows down here with it running right now it's not but you can hit the arrows and bump it up or down uh, we also have hill descent we've got the adjustable shocks so you can select um, how firm you want the ride to be anywhere from soft to firm I usually leave it on the softer side but if I'm towing I might knock it up a little bit um, and uh, what else there's the locking center diff that button is over here um, so so yeah that's kind of kind of a, a general rundown. So one of the things on the list for this one, like I already mentioned, was that it's a non-nav unit. So uh, so I was able to put in a Pioneer CarPlay deck. Um, and the surrounds even that came from Crutchfield matched the rest of the dash. So I was really happy with how that integrated. And when I installed that, I installed a backup camera. So, um, so that added some nice features to this vehicle to kind of bring it to more modern standards. It sounds louder probably driving than it actually is because it's a really windy day today. But uh, one of the things I love about this is that it still has a little bit of a trucky feel to it, but it is very smooth. It's, you know, that Lexus V8 in it. 
Um, so it's a very smooth running engine, and the thing has a pretty soft suspension cruising down the road. So, uh, so it's a pretty enjoyable uh, to drive it. And also, it, it, these things aren't huge, so they're easy to park in small spots. Um, just generally, really maneuverable. Uh, so that's that's kind of some of the stuff I like about it. So some of the stuff I've had to do, I, I had to replace the airbags. That's not an uncommon thing. A lot of people like to delete them and put a lift on. I didn't want to do that. I uh, wanted to keep them intact because I appreciate the fact that the suspension will level when you hitch a trailer up. And I do occasionally tow a trailer with it. So, um, so that was important to keep that. And the prices were quite reasonable for the R0 bags. So I just installed the Arnott bags, and along with that, I did the rear brakes and the axle seals in the back at the same time. That stuff all needed to be addressed. Um, I had the ticking on the exhaust manifold. I'm kind of used to Chevys and Fords and Dodges too, where like the studs break off. Um, that's not what happens on these. What happens on these is they're like tubular headers, kind of. Uh, they're tubular manifolds, I guess I should call them. And the walls are really thin, and so eventually you just burn through. And so I was able to get my welder in there and weld up the thin spot without having to remove anything. So I was able to do a 100% fix quite easily, and it has held up great. Uh, that was a while ago that I did that. Um, and then, of course, I did the timing belt and water pump. That's just to service that's due occasionally. Um, and then when I was getting ready to sell it here, uh, I, I knew that I had a bad boot on both of the CV shafts. So I replaced both CV shafts and I did the front brakes because I bought a kit for all four wheels. So I had the parts around, so I did the front brakes and I found a loose lower ball joint on the passenger side. So I knocked all that out in one shot, got it good to go for the next person. Um, and beyond that, I don't know, I think that's about it. I changed the fluids out and everything when I got it, the front and the rear diff, the transfer case, the transmission uh, fluid looks like new, so I didn't mess with that. Um, and then just, you know, occasional engine oil changes. So uh, so it's been quite good, um, and I'm a little bummed to get rid of it. Uh, you probably shouldn't sell, like, one of your most reliable vehicles, but uh, that's what I'm doing because it's just time to move on and time for it to get rehomed. So, uh, so this is my last spin at it here. Um, but, yeah, it's been a great experience. It's kind of a do-everything vehicle. Um, you could daily drive this absolutely it's very nice but the capabilities it has are also pretty incredible the off-road capabilities the you know in minnesota here uh being able to drive around on those nasty winter days this thing's phenomenal i love that it has full-time four-wheel drive so you don't shift into four-wheel drive when it gets nasty out it just is in four-wheel drive all the time um so that's great um and really the only knock you can give it is that it doesn't get good mileage and really what does with a V8 like this, a four-wheel drive, a full-time four-wheel drive at that, with a V8, you're just not going to get something that gets good mileage, and anything beyond that, um, it's really pretty hard to find a fault with this thing, so that's kind of my take on it. Um, cost of ownership is probably a little higher, you know, like I, I had to get, when I bought it, I just had like the valet key, I didn't have the the key fob key and it cost me 350 bucks to go to Lexus and, and get a new one made and programmed so I thought that was kind of steep but um, so there again when you do need stuff done or service done if you bring it to Lexus you're going to pay for it but uh, all in all at the end of the day um, this thing's been a relatively inexpensive vehicle for me because it's just been reliable it's hard to beat reliability um, in terms of cost of ownership if you don't have to fix anything you're going to be in it, not a lot of money. So so that's kind of my take. Um, hopefully that sheds some light on, on one of these for you if you didn't already know all of that. Um, and, and just kind of wanted to document my last drive in the GX. So good luck if you're searching for one of these. I, I sold this in uh, less than 24 hours for my full asking price, which wasn't low, but it also wasn't shooting for the stars. So these things are kind of hard to come by these days at a decent price and this thing sold in a heartbeat for my asking price and I had a whole lot of interest in it so um, so they're getting tougher to find at a decent deal but just mostly check and make sure that the thing's got a solid frame so thanks for watching